Okay, the recording is the recording has started. All right, good morning. Um, Roger asked me to go over a couple of the elements of the entire demo, but being just a couple like the ones I showed at the sales meeting. So first of all, I just want to make note maybe to Sorelli because she being the newest, she may not understand this, but in AutoCAD, you can set these toolbars up and they're shaded on top, that means you're looking down on it. So I'm going to work with Article Designer and you want to be looking down on it, so that's the button I want to click. Also, this little symbol here, at least on mine, it's, it's always big, so that means I'm only going to be seeing a part of my screen, so I really zoom way out where that thing's really, really small. But now I'm ready to start in Article Designer. And I'm going to start by typing PL for polyline. And I'm going to pick a point kind of down in the bottom lower area of the screen. And then by moving my mouse, which way the next line goes. So I want to go up. <clears throat> so I'm going to type 3, 0. Go over 15. Up 15. Over 15. And each time I'm hitting 15 and enter, move the direction I want. In this case, I'm going to hit 45 and then enter, and then just simply close. So what I... I, I, I just used 30, 15, 15, 15, 45 because it was simple math. Anyway, I just have drawn some geometry and I explained, you know, so building a custom product, any polyline geometry, you know, you want to draw. So I'll go to my article designer and we have something here called article from a contour. So I'm going to click on that and then it's asking me to give it a name. So I'm just going to call this morning. And then how do I want to apply to the contour? Do I want to apply to the plan or the front or the side? So if, in this case, I'm going to apply it to the front. So I'm going to click on that front. And hit next. Then you've got to select the polyline. And then right click or hit enter. And when you do that, you come up to this area where we're going to start creating the product. Um, this area can be viewed in 2D or 3D by hitting this icon right here. Mm -hmm. It'll take you to 3D. If you go back, it takes you to 2D. So, kind of like when I was showing you, you want to be looking down the views. So, this is like the AutoCAD views, which make Sent so it's shaded on top. So if we click on that, it highlights that top. And what this means is, do you want to work or create this part? By double clicking, double click again, the part goes away. So we want the part. Um, I was set up for stretchers, so down here. In this drop down, it holds in memory materials that you've used, or certainly the box to the right side with the three dots would be your materials library. But so in this case, I'm just going to pick this. I really don't know what this material is. I just this is what I do. This is the demo, so I know it's just a, a full top. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to speed it up just a little bit because this is exactly the same thing. I'm going to double click on the bottom. I have two left, so I'm going to double click on them. And one right, I'm going to double click on it, and I have a back. Again, it's shaded in the back, meaning that's that's the back. So I've I've created basically my top, bottom, sides, and back. Now, the next thing you can go into dividers and drawers. So if I click there, 
see the radio buttons, you have to determine what you want to do. But in this case, I'm putting in a partition. So then I need to go to this drop-down box and select partition. So a partition, you know, is up and down. So then I have to tell where do I want it to live. So that would be the first lineal division. So if I type 1 colon 1, you'll see it's right in the center. But to make this demonstration look a little more sexy, I use 1 colon 18 IN. Now I have an 18 inch hard lock value. If I go 18 IN colon 1, then the opening would just be the opposite. So then what we've created are two areas, a left side and a right side. So if I double click in the right side, it highlights. And that means we're going to work on this area. So what I want to do now is I'm still, the radio buttons on shelving and partitions, but I want to put in an adjustable or fixed shelving. Doesn't matter, whichever one you want to do. Um, so I'll just do fixed shelving. There again, this is the lineal division. If we do 1 colon 1, we have 2. We do another colon 1. Well, the 3 represents 3 divisions. So we have 3 divisions. If I, if I do one more colon, that's typically what I do, then I can, I say, see the intelligence of the software knows that polyline geometry and makes that top shelf smaller than the lower area. And most, most of the time, if you're doing the demo, they're like, wow, that's cool. So now we're going to double click in the left area. And we're simply going to click on the drawer icon right here to the left in the middle. So I'm going to pick on the drawers, and it's the same, relatively the same thing. If I do one, colon 1 and 2 drawers. I do 1 colon 1, I have 3 drawers. And that's what I usually do. I just do 1 colon 1 colon 1, 3 door, three drawers, and while I'm there, then I can just do backspace, type 6 I in and hit enter. Or if I wanted a 6 inch drawer, I simply type 6 inches. And then I kind of say, so if I put the six inches in the middle, then the, the middle drawer would be six inches. Does that make sense? You know, and so, typically. So, so you would do one colon six inches, one col colon one again? Is that what you're saying? No. Okay. No. I'll do it again. Okay. So I, after I put the shelves in, I, I double click over here, and then I say one colon, one, colon, one, and hit enter. Okay. You get three drawers. But while my, my cursor is still there without moving it, now I can just simply hit backspace and type 6IN for six inches. Now I have a six-inch drawer on the top, and the other two are just, they just automatically fill in the difference. Gotcha. So, gotcha. I don't do this in the demonstration unless somebody doesn't understand, maybe like you, and I can say, yeah, so if I do 6IN colon 1, now the, the 6 inch drawer is in the middle. Okay, that's what I was asking, if that's what would yeah. happen. Perfect. And so then right here you can, I can click in here and explain to them that I have a drop down menu kind of like um, the materials. It's just other drawer type configurations that we have in our system that we've used. And it holds the last ones you've used in memory, so you can just simply check on one of them. I also go into, well, they don't do that one, but you can. Uh, it doesn't hurt you to see what they do, but if you wanted some sort of reveal set, uh, things like that. You can click on those. The middle one I click on. And just real quickly show 
a little bit of a custom configuration that you can do. Your wheels up. If you're uncomfortable, you don't even have to go there. So. Okay. Um, well, then lastly, it, it would be putting a door on this. So it's kind of simple. We're down here on the drawers, so all we got to do is move up three to where it's shaded on front. You click on and you see the doors are highlighted, so that's not what I want. I want the one up here, and it made this area over here, meaning that's the door. So if I double click on it, I create the door. Then I do this. This icon right here, it shows the door swing. So you can open it. Sometimes it'll ask you, well, can you change which way the door hinges? And certainly, that's right down here, three-fourths of the way down on the left. You can click. You have a right-hand swing. I just go back to the left. You can shut it if you want. It just doesn't matter. But anyway, we're done. So we hit down the bottom right hand. There's a green or a red check. The red check, you delete. You're not going to use this product. The green means I'm ready to go to my drawing. And right here, it's a little confusing. If you say yes, you're going to save this to your library. But this is important to explain that if I say yes, not only does it save it to my library, but this is 3D parametric automatically on the fly, meaning now I can pull it out of a library and change height, width, depth, whatever, and it just automatically, there it is. But in this case, I'm going to say no because it's job specific. And then you just get the dialogue. And I'm just little place it in AutoCAD and then hit enter, right click, and then it draws the product. So now you, we can come in here and go to our view and see uh, the southwest view. There's other ways to do it, um, but this is just the way I do it. So you just hit the southwest view, and there it is. Um, typically, I would go into my system and hit the Visu Manager. The Visu Manager, when it's turned all the way up, it shows all the holes and all the slides and everything. So this gives me an opportunity to explain this, um, people that use AutoCAD and all know that at times it gets to be a lot of lines and if you're trying to work in there, you can turn that Visu Manager down and uh, you don't see everything. So it makes it a little easier to maneuver around inside the product. Um, next are some modification features. I'll show them such as I go over here to the top left, if you will. You can see there's a little globe. That's details. If I click on that, I get a toolbar below here, which if you hover over, it'll tell you what it is. But the third one over is article. This is your modifier. So should you want to modify the entire article, you would click this. But in this case, I'm going to, there's parts, and then the next one over are edges. In this case, I'm going to modify an edge. So I'm going to select that. And then in AutoCAD, it tells you down here what to do. Uh, select edge to modify. So I'm selecting that line and that line, and it highlights those two edges. And when you right click or hit enter, it brings the edges over here in this box. You'll see there's three boxes. This is your modifiers. It gives you more like your your edge treatment, things like that. So I explained we could we could change you know edge banding, like we wanted three mil on this edge or things like that. But really, what I'm working on is the very bottom here. And here I want to go to joint functions. I want to change my joint down the bottom left. So if I double click on change joint, then this dialog comes up and I want this to be an onset. 
could click that and say OK. So what happened is I want a butt joint. And the machining goes with it. So now my side panel is setting on the bottom. That button's a little confusing because it, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, changing the joint does, but an onset to me is this, and I selected onset, but it didn't change it because it, it remembered what you selected last time. So um, it's, it's a little quirky in that sense, but it, it does work. Um, so that's a pretty cool feature. A lot of customers are pretty wild about that. Um, I might also go in and um, zoom into this drawer and select an edge and then right click and then go to the move. We, we did joint function now. The move function, I'll double click on move and note up here that the a positive number it actually decreases in size, size, a negative number it actually increases. So if I just gave that a, um, you got to blew it out like that. If I hit negative 2 and hit enter, whoop, negative 22, it's a little bit too big. And negative 2 and hit enter, so that drawer piece went up 2 inches. So I just explained how easy it is to you know, make modifications to edges, things like that. I also explain if I wanted to draw a polyline arc from the left edge of the drawer to the right edge of the drawer, then I could extend that should I want like a an arc edge on a panel. Do that. So then I just, I'm done. Did you say do that, Dudley? Yeah, draw that arc. I want to see that. Okay. So because we have edge banding and things, it's hard to um, grab that part. So one thing I do would be um, go into uh, do, it on, do it on the back of the shelf. It's been a long time. Let's see what. Select article. There's a tool in here where you isolate a part. Just right click out there, out in the middle of the screen. And go down to isolate. And then isolate element. And pick pick the shelf or something. OK. Right. Yeah. So what I do there, I. I look down on it and then I type PL for polyline and A for arc, S for second. Well, maybe not. This is one of those deals that sometimes it works real well, but you got to be in the right, the right view. And Dudley, I'm not a real AutoCAD guy, so. I've done it a hundred times, but we may have to pick another. Yeah, see if we may have to go from the other corner. Go Probably from the right corner. A, B for arc, and S for second. There we go.
All right, now I'll go back to a southwest view. So now we're going to modify an edge. So I'm going to go over here and select edge. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge and right click. Now I'll go down in this, the modifiers here. and go to joint function and extend to a polyline and it says select your polyline and that would be right there so Sweet. that works that works either you know concave or convex so that work that's worth showing yeah um, and I, you're right, Dudley. I've showed that many times, and it's easy to get away from one of your tricks. And I think I think you're right. That is a powerful, powerful. Uh... So lastly, then I might we've showed modifying joints, selecting we've selected parts. Now I'm going to select the entire article. Something didn't work there. Select article. Oh, went blank. So I've selected the article, then modify. Again, these are your modifiers. So we've selected an article. The article's here in this window. So right here, modify article contour, double click, and it brings that polyline geometry up. And just select on this polyline anywhere. Whoa. And be prepared. A lot of times when you're doing demos with some things happen and something just happened. The polyline disappeared. So don't know. Let's just maybe try it again. You have to select your article probably again. Yeah. Modify article contour. And maybe you do, I don't know, I, I didn't pick it at the top. I've always picked it at the top, but just for training, I was just saying you can pick it anywhere, which I think you can, but anyway, I lost it. Anyway, I pick it at the top, I guess. So now there's pick points. You can see they're highlighted. So I just pick this corner, and then you can just move that up. And I just give it a little bit of an angle like that and hit enter and then come over and hit the green button saying OK. And just make note that this article is tied to that polyline. So when you modify the polyline and everything regenerates, I pointed out the intelligent um, cam connectors that we have. It, it went out and found a connector that would work in that application. Um, then you can go to modify article, select the article, go right back where you were. Now you can view it in 2D. You can zoom into a corner. And literally by clicking once on the left edge, clicking once on the right edge, clicking once again on the left edge, what that does, it changes that to a miter. And I simply say, OK. I'm saying no, I don't want to save the changes. It's going to save it, but again, saying yes, it saves it to the library. So I'm going to say no. And then it modified that part to a miter, and then I show the, the mitered cam. Not that you have to live with that connector, but that it just it just picked it. So anyway, that's pretty much article designer. Roger asked me to do the room. So I'll go to the room. The thinking insert. is the thinking is is that uh, typically in the past we've always done room and then article. Uh, with the technology being so powerful at the article level, get that out on the in front of them first, and then go to the room, which everybody does a room. Yeah. 
the article designer, my thought again, it, it, it kind of kind of creates some wow factor. The walls really don't. So then but the walls are a necessity. And then after I do the walls, then I go and do the die wall, kind of like what Deadly showed, and then for the most part I'm done. So on the walls, again, I just picked picked a wall and I like it where it's looking at you like this. So if it's not, you can change these southwest views and things like that. So I go into my library. By the way, we were over here in the globe, so to get back to your library, it's this left button here. So now I'm going to my frameless library. And what I do, I do a two-door base, so I select on the base, go down to the two-door and double-click. It says select your wall. I just illustrate that it has the intelligence to follow the wall. I kind of explain the pick points. We're highlighted in the bottom left corner. So that's just your snap. In other words, the product or article is um, snapping that bottom left corner. So I just pick a point and so then explain, you could change your width. These are your default values, um, but you can certainly override them by typing in any value and hit OK or Enter. Then I just scroll down and grab a drawer bank. Whoops, I'm sorry. A drawer bank, I do the three drawer. Just select on this article anywhere and then explain this blue box. It's how, where do you want to place this next product being a three door? Do you want it on top? Do you want to put it on back? Put it on back, you could rotate it here 180 degrees to make like an island uh, product or here it would make sense to be on the right side and then I say okay. I'm just going to use my wheel and scroll out a little bit and go to a tall. So I'll say a tall. I pick this first one, double click, select my article. And it's weird. It's like this only does this in a go to meeting. It does not do that when I'm doing a demo live on site, but go to meetings it does. So you need to be aware. So my product is is lining up on top. That's a tall. I mean, we want it to line up on bottom. So we have to change by this button here. And figure it out here in a minute. I'm not real good at this thing. I have never seen this before. There you go. So here I want it. There, I don't know. Got to click around and it'll it works, but it, it's something to do with go to meeting, I guess. So anyway, just be aware of that. At least it happens on my system. I say okay. Um, then I put a, an upper on there, two door upper, pick the wall, and then I just say, okay, I want it 52 inches off the floor, or 53, whatever, and hit, and there it is. And you can hit right click, enter, or hit the green button. <laughs> What I do here sometimes, I'll just type um, CI for circle, and I might put a little bit of a circle right here, and then go back to select my parts, and I'll select this part, this part. Doesn't matter if you want to select this top, you can. You got to be careful. It's just a little harder to pick. And then I'm going to transfer an AutoCAD element. 
and a, a circle as a pocket. It says select your AutoCAD element, right click, and I just show them I can give them a through hole or a fixed depth and hit OK. So that's pretty impressive too, kind of like the arc on the shelf. Um, that's pretty much it. Sometimes people ask about moving hardware, so you can select the hardware and go down to the move, the move function. You move and rotate hardware. Um, so now I'm ready to do uh, my plan elevation and section. So we're going to go to our drawing views. Mark, real quick, um, if, uh, uh, if the customer asks you, well, how do you, because you're pulling out all these boxes from the library, so how do you pull the one that you, the one-off design that you just created and put it into this design? The, how do so, I put the one? So, so one really, one? I, let me answer that. The, the reason, uh, remember when he, it asked, do you want to save it? He would save it to his library, then it would be just like any other box, and he could pull it in. He, he intentionally gotcha. did not save it. Gotcha. So for the customer, they would want to save it so Possibly. that they can put it in their design. Possibly. Uh, okay. It, it just depends uh, on, on some store fixturing companies. Uh, yeah, they would probably put it in their design. We don't want to put it in our design because... It just builds up a bunch of data that we're not going to use. Right. Or the other thing you could do is give it the exact same name all the time and just override it so you would have one custom there all the time. Gotcha. That, that design that he built is parametric, too. So you, uh, he, he doesn't show that. But um, if he were to bring it in as, and change the size of it, it might be you know even cooler. Uh, the, the thing about doing... What Mark is going to do in the future, later on is send all this data over to uh, Cutright, and the materials are matched up. If he's pulling in stuff that he that he built on the fly, he may have a material match problem, and it won't run properly in Cutright. I see. It's not a big deal. Like one, I can move this and put it over here. I can put it on this wall, so I can move this to be on this wall. Oh, you could. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. But then you get, um, in, you get yeah, into a rotation have, problem. If I would have saved it into my library and then I wanted to take it out, it's as simple as just clicking on anything over here, right clicking, and you can delete the article. I see. So it's not, it's not a problem to save something to show them, then you can certainly delete it if you want. Okay, I just have to remember to delete it. You don't have to. I mean, it's just up to Okay. Um, yeah, so so I could move that. Maybe I should show you. So again, this is an article. So I'm going to select on an article. And then I'm going to go to my modifiers. And I'm going to um, go to my move command. So what I'm going to do, I have to pick and Dudley, being an AutoCAD guy, might figure out a, a better way. But anyway, I need to pick two points. So I'm going to put that bottom left to the bo or the right left of that one. So, and it might be before I do it, best to go to the visual because it's kind of hard to see. So let's turn everything down. Are they okay? So I'm going to take that and move. So I have, I'm going to select point one, and point one is going to be the bottom right corner, and point two, pick a point back here. Oh wow! So the system tells you where the front and the back is. It can read it, and then it's an easy. Okay. So let's go back to our drawings now. Go to our drawing views. 
So we're ready to do a plan elevation and section. So I'm going to select the 2D plan. And here you just click. We're going to like make a window around it. So I'm going to get way down here on the left and, and not hold my button down. Just click a point and release. And I have a free floating box here. So it doesn't matter. Just as long as you capture everything and hit the left click button again. That captures it. So then you right click or hit enter. And it automatically draws this. Okay, so now I'll just place it at a point. So I'll say I want it here. And then the next thing it, it labels it. So you've got to place that where you want to go. Um, so then the drop down, that, the plan, now we're going to do an elevation. So we just select on this thing anywhere. And then there's this pointer. And this pointer, you got to make sure that it's pointing at what you want to look at. If it's pointing over here this way, we're only going to see that wall. We want to see the products. The products are up above us. So I'm going to hit OK. So it draws the elevation. We'll put it up here. And again, it's, it's trailing with a label, so i got to place that somewhere. So we've got view one. So now we can section. So I'm going to create a section. Mine, I always have to unselect this colorization. If you don't, it's all shaded and looks garbage. So um, supposedly there's a way, but have not figured out how to have that unselected. So remember to select unselect colorization and then select the products that you want to render or render, I'm sorry, a uh, section. So I'm going to select both the upper and the lower and say and right click. Now like I need give it a you know word you know where do I want to slice it so I'm going to cut it here and I think I just now remembered in the meeting someone said do it from the top down instead of the bottom up and then which way do you want to look at it and then right click and it automatically gives it a section marker of A as you can see and then I just need to give it a point I'm, I'm pushing down on my wheel, on my mouse, pushing down on my wheel so I can move that over. And then I like that. I hit OK. And again, I've got a trailer. And then I say I want the section to be here. It's, it's good to zoom in and show them the detail of the section. It shows the materials, the edge banding and everything. And then zoom out. And we're going to go to our cross section drop down, that's where your section dimensioning is, you select on it anywhere, then back over to the top left, we're going to do the drop down and do our view dimension of our elevation, again view dimension of our plan. And so we're there. Um, sometimes I'll just say now we can use your title blocks. Um, and put this in. Sometimes they, they want to see it. So here's load your border. So you should have a drawing template. I always just use A and hit OK. And then I got to zoom in. And you have to click. I have three areas here called viewport. So I'm going to I'm going to click in here, double click so I'm and it brings that. So then I got to look at it down on a on the top view and then I go to link so I want to link the elevation and it automatically scales it I'm going to double click up here in this area go to the top view and then I'm going to say I want to link the elevation double click over here change it to I can see the top now I want to link um, the section so I have a plan elevation and section, and some will say, well, can I show it 
show it in 3D. Certainly, you can make another viewport and show that, you know, in 3D. And what that would mean. Um, Oh, I got to unlink it. Detach the link. Then I could come in here and show this in a 3D perspective view if I wanted. Um, anyway, that's it. So a lot of times then they'll ask about you know reports or things like that. So. Um, I'm going to go to system, I'm going to save the order as, and I'm going to do this as morning again. And you got to remember to click the G code. There is a setting where you can have these automatic, automatically selected and then process data transfer and then hit OK. What is it you check to make it generate the drawings of each part? That basket. There was another radio button, I think, called baskets. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. You say don't do that? No, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot. Yeah. So here I just explained, you know, if you had more than one machine, you could say all or select whatever machine you wanted. So um, if they're a, a saw and a point-to-point, -point, I'm going to just create NPR files. If it's nesting, then I would create the cut right. So I'm going to create a nest and say OK. So you saw I had zero errors and 111 warnings. Um, then you got to wait for this dialog box to come up, and we're done. As long as you don't have any errors and you don't have any problems. If you see you have an error, it's probably because you don't have a material or something. Um, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment. Anyway, we've saved the job. So now if we go to Output and go to Parts List, just explain that we use Microsoft Report Writer. So here are the reports that come with it. Um, but certainly you can customize the reports. Um, just between me, you, and the grapevine, customizing the reports seem to be very, very difficult. They can be done, but uh, we've had a little bit of issue of just people knowing how to do it. Um, you can check some of these that you would like and get familiar with. I thought about deleting some of these. There's, there's so many. Um, quantity survey is a good one. So I just pick a few and then, then hit the, the check mark. And that creates the reports. My computer is really running fast. I bet it's doing some uh, antivirus scan. Sometimes it's good to turn those off if you're doing a demo. Anyway, um, there was no, there was nothing there for whatever the reason. Quantity survey, you can just go through that it shows the materials. Um, you know, even the and make make note. You see one of one. Sometimes there'll be more pages. Um, what did I do? I don't know what happened there. Anyway, I think when you hit the, when you hit the red X, it shut them all off. 
Yeah, they're there. They're just anyway. Here's the manufacturing report. That's a pretty good report. Um. Anyway, I would like. To, I wish we had some better reports. So we're ready to. Um, we're ready now to go to cut right. So I'll just open up cut right. And then you go up here to the top left, go to file, import parts. And that job was uh, used to, you know, the, first, the job that I just created always came in, but it's, but you can sort by the date or however, but anyway, this is in alphabetical order. So here's the morning, the morning we just created, so I'll double click on it. That brings everything in to cut right, which just is a spreadsheet of all your parts. And so in this case, we already determined we were nesting, but it doesn't hurt to say, you know, especially if they have more than just a nesting machine, if they have a saw that you can select, well, I guess that's the one thing, by just selecting on it shows you, shows you the parts. Um, but you could, um, you can change here, like if I wanted this to be, to uh, to create like a a sawing type, uh, I could do that configuration. But again, we're doing nesting here. Uh, before I go, generally it'll work. If for some reason it it doesn't work, it's because you don't have materials, and it'll air out. So you can click. Above your materials here, you can click in that white box, and you can select a material. And when you select the material, then you, it, it it does a mass change. So at least it allows you to optimize if that happens. So um, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to hit optimize here and see. I do. I have a problem. So for whatever reason, I have a board. And that's where Roger asked me to do, you know, that's one reason you always want to find out what works in your demo and stick with your demo because, unless you're familiar with how to change things, because you'll get errors like this and then, then it, the demo is going to go bad. Um, so let's see if we can find a, a material. I'll just change everything to this. Uh, uh, I don't know, let's see if that one works. And then when I click here, they all change. I still got problems, so there's a board list. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to overwrite. And Running it anyway. Well, I overwrit it with the, with the board list. So, so anyway, this comes up, so you can show them all of your. Um, you have a batch summary, you have a management summary, a pattern summary, a board summary, and then we can see our nested preview. So that's pretty impressive when you've built that custom article, and they see all those parts there. How does uh, cut rights opt optimization compare with cabinet visions optimization? Well, as far as I guess we pres uh, get a better yield. I don't know how it really compares deadly. I just have always heard that there's only two great optimizers, and that was artist 
and cut right. Um, I mean, I'm just being honest with you. Through the years, sometimes artists might win a little bit on a job. Another one, cut right, might win a little bit on a job. Um, they. It's my understanding that cut right and artists are the only ones that do perfect grain matching. Um, you know, cut right can do not only saw but also nesting. Cut right can do head cuts and other things. Um, can batch process. Um. Well, I only ask because I was asked yesterday by a Cabinet Vision user, why would I? Why would I? Why would I buy cut right? Why is it better than what I'm using? I couldn't answer his question, so I need to find out why. Yeah, well, and Cabinet Vision. Excuse me, uh, Mark, but Cabinet Vision also doesn't have the controls like uh, you know. Uh, Cut right and artist for outfeed controls. You know, for a small shop, it's fine. But if you get into a bigger shop, cut right and and artist just has the sophistication for management control. You know, they're sophisticated optimizations that nobody else compares with. You know, it's it's just sophisticated optimization. Pattern systems used to be in that league too until, of course, they got bought out by 2020. Yeah, cut planner 30 was pretty good. Yeah, but, but you know, it, it's all in the control settings, outfeed controls, head cuts, and so forth and so on. But you know, cabinet vision and microvellum is not anywhere in their league. The the bottom line too, Dudley, is is that cut right is primarily uh, used in the home ag wholesome world, and everything about that product is is when as they've developed it, they've developed it in that for that world. Uh, so that customer yesterday. There is no question that he is compromised by because he's a home ag customer. He's compromised by not using cut right. It's probably why he asked the question. He wanted to know what the what the big deal was. Well, the big deal is is that the Holsma saws. Does this guy have a saw? He's got a no, he's got a a weaky, um He's got a router, router and he's and he's buying another one. So he's yeah. gonna be running two weaky routers. The so, well, Dudley what? What I tell them, people who have like Alpha Cam or Router Sim, um, you know, they have Cabinet Vision. They're probably running Alpha Cam. I say we can certainly just send a DXF file out to to Alpha Cam or to Router Sim, whatever the case may be. That's an option, or we have, you know, cut right. Okay. Well, I got him sold on Production Coach, and then we'll just we'll weed out the rest of it as we go. Yeah, I, I, I just I guess I need to I, I could uh, maybe I could whoever sold him the uh, the new router might would know some things too. The guy that would know that is is uh, Scott uh, Crookshank would know the answer to that, and Sam would know the answer to that, and Alan should know the answer to that as to what okay. what's there why is theirs better than than. Uh, I mean, I know it's better, but what, like, like, what could I tell someone that would actually? Because I, I don't know, I don't know exactly what he can't do. He, he probably doesn't even know what he can't do. Because I mean, if you can't, if you don't know what's missing, then you, you've never missed it. So maybe I could get educated, and I could educate him. So actually, there's I, an. I um, might point out for just like Mark, there's an account in Alabama that was using Cabinet Vision. And they got bought out by some guy, and uh, that guy uh, is growing his business substantially. And he switched over to uh, Woodcad Cam and Cutright versus Cabinet Vision. And I asked him, so what in the world? Why why did you make these changes? He says because every time I talked to my people, I found out that Cabinet Vision was limiting me on the way I could do things all across the board. And uh, I'm sure part of it was that. So maybe going back to that guy and asking him to elaborate a little bit on it, because he he was feeling strangled by uh, cabinet, and he he admittedly switched from residential to commercial, and uh, he just couldn't get it. But his I'm sure he was getting hung up on the machining also. Uh, but he would know he, from a customer's standpoint. He would know. Okay. 
I'll find out some more, put together something because this guy's like most people. He he doesn't want to say what he's doing is wrong. You know, he's yeah. happy with himself, but down deep he knows he's got some holes that need filling. And you guys probably know, but just in case, sometimes they'll ask the the data structure. So, you know, it's in your C and uh, program data, home ag e solutions, and go into factory. And so, the, like here would be your jobs. Here's the morning. Um, No, nope, that's not the one. All your individual parts are there. Sometimes, okay. you know, a question will come up. Okay, so I've damaged. You know, we're nesting. I got one part damaged. You know, how do I get that part? Um, another one then is in NC data. That would be. If you were wanting to show your point-to-point, -point, your NPR files for individuals, um, we didn't generate, you know, I didn't select that one, but they would be in there, so just take a look. There's all your NPR files. What we did was a NIST, and there's morning. So there's all your DXF files. And then what I was going to point out, a lot of times people will say, well, can we change the dimensioning styles? So for Sorelli, yes, you know, you can use your exact dimensioning styles you use today. It's just AutoCAD. Anything else, Roger? No, that's great. Any questions? Terry, you got any uh, questions? Did, you, did that help? Yes. Help me. Thank you very much, Mark. It helped me a lot, I Mark. Uh, I, I tried to go real slow and move around so, you know, I, I speed that up at least twice as fast in a normal demo, but... I know from watching Sean, if I can't see the buttons being pushed, it doesn't help a lot. Right. Absolutely. I appreciate you going real slow. Hey, yeah, uh, thank you. Go back to the uh, article designer, to that custom article, for just one second, please. You want to bring it back up into that? Yeah, into the right there. Something I'll show you that helps me a little bit. You see, in the, um, you know how you were talking about the little shaded boxes where you know it was the top, bottom, left side, right side on it? When you get to the one that says divider drawers, it's kind of subtle, but you can see that that one has a partition in it. You drill down to the next one and see it has a shelf in it. And if you drill down to the next one, it'll show a drawer on it. Mm-hmm. See it? Okay, that was it. The little that little picture changes to to what you have in that at the time. Yeah. That may be more of a thing for people actually using it, but I thought that was pretty neat. You know, um, right, while, while we're here, this wasn't on the agenda. There might be something else to share. Um, so this is a little different. Here's a features key. So if I just want to create a new article designer, 
Um, I've shown this before, like let's say they have a, um, oh maybe there's a school, they've got a, a, a 10 foot run, but every room when they do field verification, every room's a little different. So if I just made this height um, 35 inches and the width 120 inches and the depth 24, um, so this is like a run of, of cabinets. Um, I haven't done this for a while, so bear with me, but it's kind of cool. There's places where this is really, really cool. Um, Let's see. Maybe I should show. Yeah, go to the divider and drawers first. Oh, you know this one? Probably. Yeah. And you want to do articles on? Yes, yes. There you go. There you go. And then to break it up in your uh, linear division. Right. Well, you have to pick the article first. Uh, go down. See where it says articles on? Right. You, you're no, no, no. Go back where you were. Back in divider and drawers. Okay, see where it says article zone? Keep going down. A little bit more. Keep going down. Right there, right there. Pick the product you want to put in it. Well, right. But first I gotta I gotta divide it up. Mm -mm, you gotta pick the product first. First I wanna put a partition. Oh yeah, there you go. You're right. Yeah, but it's, uh, I don't think but so. I wanna put a I wanna put virtual, meaning they're fake partitions. Okay, and then do the division. So You're so right. It's the same thing, one colon, one colon, one, or in this middle area, maybe it needed to be 18 I N. You get what we're doing, or we can control these. So now, yes, I can click in this area. Right, you're right. Now I'm going to go to article zone, and then this holds in memory products that I've picked before, so I'll just do a, a, a two-door, two-drawer. Then I'm going to double-click in the other area, article zone, and here I want a one-door. Over here, I'm going to go article zone. I want to pick a three-drawer. And over here, we go article zone. And I may, you know, here I'll go to my library. So I want a frameless library. I want a base unit, something that we haven't used. So uh, a one door with a partition. So now I can say I want to save this to my library. I'm going to save as, and I'm going to call this a hundred and a 20 inch run, you know, whatever. And then where do I want to put it? I want to put it in my um, frameless and I want to put it in my base unit and say okay. Let's just go and create a new order. So now if I go to my base, I have a 120 inch run, right? Mm -hmm. So my room two, it's 122.25, okay? So that's that's pretty cool from that. Um, then we could go in and uh, uh, where's my dimensioning at? And dimension that. So 
So we said that one to be 122 and a quarter. That one was 120. So that's pretty. That's pretty powerful to some. So anyway. He's got his uh, Vizu set down pretty low. He could turn that up and see everything. Um, Mark, does it put does it put uh, double sides in that run for each box? It is, isn't it? Yeah. It does, but you can, you don't have to. Right. You could easily go in there and delete the sides off the drawer panel and that one on the, uh, the other two center ones or, or whatever you need to do and then draw it back. So now if we were to... But that's the way you would build it anyway in a commercial job with two sides, correct? Yeah, it's just uh, this just automatically does all the calculations on the ones that can be uh, changed and leaves the ones that are fixed fixed. Like the drawer bank is 18, no matter what. The only the other three move by equal amounts. Yeah, because of the way he did the linear division on the group. Is that right, Mark? Yeah. So now, if we wanted to select an article. If you'll notice these two red boxes right here, one looks like a one drawer and the other looks like a three drawer. So what that means is if I pick the three drawer, we can go to our modify article and we go back to where we were. If we do modify article and pick a single drawer or a sing the single one, the red one, then we're only working on that one product. Make sense? Yep. Pretty slick. Yep. Uh, another thing that's, that microvellum can't do is associative machining from one product to another. Each product is an island. And with this uh, C construction, this will do that. that. Um, transfer machining from one product to another. Just in case if we select a part, select on this hardware, this handle, pull, it's the same thing. So then we can change pull position or move and rotate. But move and rotate. No, that's the wrong one. Well, that you can use that, but change pull position. So now we can move it and we can give it, there's drop down menus here. So we can move it distance to a left edge, to the right edge, top, bottom, heights. Same thing, we can click in here. I didn't mean to do that. We can click in and rotate. So we want to rotate it, and we can give it an angle of rotation. I want it to go the other way, so it's a negative 45. I look like that's the wrong way, though. Okay, I'm um, going to go ahead and uh, and stop the recording, um, and uh, I think I think that's enough for now. Mark, I really want to thank you for uh, for 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 doing this. Um, clearly, you've got a lot of experience demonstrating this product, and um, so it gives you it gives you a starting point, Sorelli, uh, to play with this. Um, we were uh, going to try to focus on production coach. I think we're at a point where we have to stop. Um, when do you guys want to pick up more training? Uh, I, I'm available after this afternoon or tomorrow. 
uh, I hit a plane on Monday and don't get back till Saturday night next week. So um, I don't know when I would have time to do any more additional training. Um, <clears throat> but I am worried about uh, production coach. Carrie, you want to try to do something on that? Sorelli? Um, I mean, I'm available tomorrow morning if you want to do sit down for production coach. Okay. Terry, what do you I'm, look like? I'm available any time, Roger. Sorry? I'm available about any time. Okay. Um, Dudley? Yeah, I'm good tomorrow morning. Okay. Let's just pick it up again tomorrow morning. The goal will be to not talk about this, but the goal will be to do uh, production coach. <laughs> Excuse me. Mark, do you want in on that, that or, or are you okay? No, I'm good. Okay. All right, guys. Um, let's just plan on uh, 